Guys, it's a miracle that we're actually on time. We're on time, yay! Um, welcome to my new studio. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, talk to you guys about saving some money when it comes to airfare. Um, I get asked all the time how I'm, how I'm able to afford to travel as much as I do. Um, so I've kind of learned the hard way and um, have just compiled over time a list of uh, ways and things things that I use to save money on um, on airfare. Let me know if the picture and the sound quality is okay. I don't see, let's see, live chat. All messages are visible. Hopefully, I see you, I, I see you. Um, hopefully we don't, oh, oh hey, ah, why would I zoom? Why would I do that? Craig, hello! And Doug, hi Doug. Um, hi guys, welcome to the broadcast. This is weird. It just did this really crazy Zoom thing that I'm not excited about. Oh well, um, we'll go with it. Anyway, um, thanks so much for being here. I know that you guys have so many other things you could be doing right now uh, than sitting with me and, and talking with me live. Um, but these are some some tips that uh, have helped me out. Um, when it comes to shopping for airfare. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of dive into some of these. Many of them are already familiar to you, um, but there were some some new things that I just recently discovered that I wanted to share. Um, you did go to Skyscanner. Pretty cool. Might be shifting the plans though. Oh, interesting. So um, made it over safely. Awesome. Hi, hi Earl. Hi, Bill. Okay. Um, hi, Vix. Hi, Simon. To both Simons. Yay. This, this, it's weird. So my picture totally zoomed and I'm, I'm looking at a huge blown up image of my forehead on my computer screen right now. So let me just see how, how I do this. Oh, no, that didn't help either. Interesting. That's fine. Um, it actually might be less distracting if I can if I can't see myself. So if I've got something stuck in my teeth, I am I am confident that you'll let me know. Hi Asha. Hi Stuart. And actually, the comments are blown up. So this is this is actually better. Okay, let's do it this way. Kind of a less narcissistic way to broadcast, right? Um, all right. So let's just dive right in. I always talk about an app that I use. It's called Skyscanner. Um, Skyscanner is great because it allows you to enter the departure city um, and then you in the destination box you can type in the word everywhere. What's really neat about that is it will populate all of these, uh, all of the cheapest deals at that time, at the time that you select to travel. Um, that was how I was able to go to Kauai, that was how I was able to go to Hong Kong. Um, so many great, uh, really low airfare deals uh, through that website. I also recently discovered that um, there's a similar site called Momondo. Momondo. I'm assuming it's like Mamon, Mamondo. It reminds me of Mundo. Anyway, um, but Google Flights is also another good option. But Mamon, Mamondo, M-O-M-O-N-D-O. And I, excuse me, I can leave links down below just so that you guys know um, Skyscanner and Mamondo work excellent for that. Similar, similar thing, you type in the word anywhere over on Mamondo, I believe. Um, hi again, Simon. Asha's here. I'm so happy. I love when you guys show up. This makes me really happy. Ruben, hi. Um, oh, and one quick announcement. We just hit 3,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for, for subscribing um, and just for watching and for following me a lot along this journey and um it's it's really exciting 2019 has some some cool stuff in store for us so uh just stick with me i am going to central america i'm going to be visiting two countries um very soon so i'm really excited about that hi again rd don't hit me with that wrench bill <laughs> oh no earl you need one too let's do this um uh, moderator Ooh, perfect um, we love showing up. Yay. As long as Earl behaves. Oh my goodness. Earl and Bill. Am I going to have to put you guys in the corner? Congrats on hitting 3000. Thanks, Vix. Hi, uh, Bill fam. That's fun to say. Okay. So moving right along. Um, 
another common question is how far in in advance uh, should you book travel? There's a few different there's not one answer to that question. It really depends on what season you're traveling. Um, and so the information I have here is actually according to Forbes. Uh, the best time to buy an airline ticket during the winter is going to be around 62 days in advance. So following that two month rule of thumb, any time later than that, you're going to see the prices start to spike. During the spring, it's about 90 days in advance. Um, and that's going to be just because you've got things like spring break, um, several different factors. The, the weather is warmer, typically um, in in certain parts of the world. And so um, 30 or 90 days in advance um, is for spring. For summer, it's 47 days in advance. It's kind of a weird number, but this was all research based on an article um, from Forbes. Um, in the fall, it says 69 days in advance. So again, around the two month. So I think as a rule of thumb, um, six to eight weeks, it generally will will be the best time frame. Um, but getting very specific to the seasons, um, that is what information was posted. Um, let's see. So do 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 do. Good question. Sawa Sawa, hello. Who is Forbes? Um, Simon. Earl, this is why I like stuff so much. Oh, no. Uh, even for spring break week. Yeah, for spring break week, too. So it's just kind of a general, um, just a general estimate. Um, obviously, that kind of is a good segue, actually. If you have the flexibility to travel in off-peak times, you're going to save a lot more money. Um, I recently saw a ticket that was to Denmark direct from Seattle for $200. Does anyone know why though? Who wants to go to Denmark right now? It's freezing cold. Um, but if you don't mind the weather, um, maybe that's an affordable way for you to see another country. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind is traveling during off peak. Um, season. Patrick, hello. Hello, Tracy. Stuart says, shh. Um, absolutely. I oh, thank you, Ruben. Um, Stuart. Oh, I see. Um, Stuart, am I coming in loud and clear for you? Are you, are we having audio issues? If, if we are, please speak up and let me know. I would be happy to do as much as I can to troubleshoot, um, that. Anyway, uh, moving on. Moving on. So let's see. So sometimes booking one way flights is actually cheaper. Um, say you're planning a trip to, um, well, I'm actually going to use my sister as an example. So I have my sister visiting up here from, um, from Oregon and she was originally planning to take a trip to Orlando. She was going to go out there. Um, and it's actually cheaper for her to fly from her hometown to Seattle because Seattle's a main hub um, and then spend the time to visit with me and then go directly from Seattle to Orlando. Um, so that's something to consider is if you don't live near a main hub, consider taking a road trip, um, taking into factoring in um, fuel and gas, gas costs and, and stuff like that. It's, it's sometimes more affordable to do that. I know that when I lived in Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara is not a main hub and it's a very expensive airport to fly into. Um, so I would always just drive two hours south, sometimes more depending on traffic, two or three hours to LAX. LAX is a main hub and it was so much cheaper to fly out of LAX and it was just a few hours drive. So that's another way. Um, Loud and clear for me. Thanks, Tracy. Audio good. Forehead size is normal. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I was actually, yeah. It's something that I did on my, with my magic mouse. I think I did this and it zoomed weird. I actually kind of like the fact that I can't see myself. As a broadcaster, it's weird because we always have to keep ourselves in check. And there was this one broadcast, segue really quick. One broadcast I did where I had this a piece of salad stuck in my teeth. And then of course, everybody was so kind and they shared the broadcast all over social media. And of course I later got to see my salad all over my feed. 
waving at me. Um, but whatever. Anyway, yes, Bill, but eyes are big and beautiful. Oh, thanks. When I book um book a train, if it has first class, I prefer to pay a bit extra for a quieter train. That's good advice. Um, so to get cheap flights, pop in and see stuff on the way. Sounds like a double whammy, yeah. Well, no, yeah, if you can make a double trip out of it, um, long layovers, taking advantage of long layovers, because here's a rule of thumb. The more of a pain in the bum the flight is, the cheaper it probably is. So for example, if I'm flying from here to Hong Kong, there's I've noticed there's a majorly long layover in San Francisco like overnight, so a 12 hour layover, why not make a trip out of it? Um, explore San Francisco, uh, visit someone you know there, um, build that into your itinerary and you can save money. Now pe the argument is, well, what about lodging? Um, so if you're open to the idea of staying at a hostel, that's one thing. Um, I recently discovered hostels um, and I'm, I'm, in love with the idea because it allows me to save money and spend it in other places uh, during my travels. So hostels are a big deal, big way to save money. Um, let's see, do do do. Stuart, you are more than welcome to leave. Um, I understand my content is not for everybody, um, and I'm not even about to try and please 100% of my audience. So feel free, and if you'd even like to take the action and leave me a dislike. Um, it still sends YouTube the message that um, that there is an action being taken. Um, so whether it's a like or a dislike, it actually flags YouTube that uh, my content is being watched. So thank you for your time, and um, I hope you can find what you're looking for. Uh, Chive, hi Kenneth. Painted the bum, so so British, right? Um, let's see, boot. I booted him. Thanks, Kenneth. Um, I mean, I I totally get it. I'm not trying to please everybody. Um, he's probably looking for something different. Uh, da, 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 da. So we talked about how far in, in advance two itineraries are usually cheaper than one. Um, I was I was trying to figure out how to get to the Galapagos Islands, and um, some of you who have been following me um, know that that's something that I was trying to do. Um, and direct from Seattle to the Galapagos Islands is insanely expensive. However, if I flew to um, either Costa Rica or Ecuador first, um, and then flew from there to the Galapagos Islands, um, it was actually cheaper. So sometimes splitting up your trip and taking one, several um, one-way flights can actually save a lot of money in certain situations. So that's another scenario. Um, hi, Tom. Tom, look at. I have my iced coffee and it's been iced for hours. Um, let's see. Off peak. So, obviously, we talked about avoiding times like spring break, holidays. Uh, those are going to be peak travel times. And so the prices are going to be hiked. So, the bottom line and the main theme that is pretty obvious here is flexibility. Um, being flexible on your dates, uh, traveling midweek, you're going to save a lot more money. Um, there's different websites that say different days, but I've found in my experience that the cheapest day to fly is Wednesday, Wednesday and a Saturday that has always worked for me. That's always been the cheapest. So if you have that kind of flexibility, uh, definitely go for, for midweek, um, the most expensive is obviously going to be Friday, Sunday, uh, Monday, I think too. What else? Um, another thing that's interesting is when you purchase the day of the week that you purchase your tickets. So um, let's see, where, where did I write that? That was cheapest day to, to buy flights. Um, cheapest day to purchase flights. Okay. So the, the cheapest day to purchase flights, not to leave, not your departure date, but to purchase, to make the purchase is Tuesday because airlines on, on Monday evenings um, announce their deals. And so then by Tuesday afternoon, all the other airlines want to um, raise the competition. So what they do is they lower their rates. So if you can aim for Tuesday afternoons to 
book your travel, um, that's typically when you're going to uh, get the lowest deal, the lowest um, airfare. Um, let's see. We talked about long layovers, using them to your advantage. Let me see if I can catch up on some of these comments. Um, so what's your must pack in the bag things, essentials? The packing. Um, I feel like that's going to be, um, that would, Wait, what's, what's your must pack? The bags of essentials. Um, I, I feel like that's a separate conversation, but just off the top of my head, one thing that came to mind is, you know how when you're going through security, you can't obviously have a bottle of water. And some of us, if you're like me, you wait to the very, very last minute and you're always running late and you're always running everywhere you go. And just after you get through security, you don't have time to go to the the shops to buy bottled water and once you board they don't serve water until you've maintained you know your your um altitude uh your reached your your climbing altitude and once the seatbelts yeah they don't serve water um right away so some of us have medication we have to take or we just get parched um, something that came to my mind was um, to fill a travel size, TSA approved travel size bottle just of drinking water. Why not? I'm like, we use those for our toiletries, but, um, but I was thinking about it and it's like, that is so useful to have if um, you have a headache and you need water or something to take medication with. Um, so that was something interesting, but Asha, I would love to um, in a separate broadcast go over all of my bag of like in-flight essentials because that um, makes flying so much more comfortable. All right, let's see. Um, spring break looked wild <laughs> in the 80s. Any deals better during the time of month, end of month? Um, during the time, the end of the month, any, any, how about deals? Any deals better during the time of month, end of month, etc. Um, again, I feel like it probably depends. Do you guys hear music? It's weird. It probably depends on the season. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I wonder that it makes me wonder. That's one thing I don't know. I don't have that on my list. Airlines update IATA clearinghouse on Wednesday. So yes, Tuesday is the best day to get cheap flights. Thank you, Tom. Um, good idea. You could even put several in. Sorry, someone needs to leave a message by mistake. Oh no, that's okay. Um, uh, that's a good question though. I don't know. Um, so we talked about midweek flights. Oh, here's another thing. Whenever you're searching for a flight, make sure that you are searching on a private browser. If you're using Google Chrome, um, you go in incognito mode because what airlines do is they will keep track based on your IP address on how many searches you run. And if you, there's a certain number of times, if you keep running that search, they will spike the price. It's really scandalous, but always do your, run your searches on a private browser um, so that that doesn't happen. Um, so long distance traveling, aside from walking down the aisle, any advice movement wise? Oh, movement wise, I got up um, and just started stretching. I've I stood in, you know, the um, the I've stood in, in places where there was more room and I've like stretched my quads and I stretched my calves up against the wall. And um, that that helps. And, and nobody's if people look at you weird, whatever, you're going to be the one who has your blood circulating in a healthy way. Let them sit there forever. But usually people understand you could do jumping jacks. Um, Steph, have you ever been on a cruise or an island? Patrick, I want to encourage you to go check out my Bahamas cruise uh, vlog. We had so much fun. That was um, just a few months ago. I have and I really enjoyed it. It was a weekend in the Caribbean. Uh, in the Bahamas. They can still pick up info in uh, incognito mode. Dave, that would be interesting to, to find out. I'd love to hear more information about that, but I have always had success in, in, uh, in incognito mode. Um, maybe I'm flying under the radar somehow. Sneak in them. Good tip. Yes. 
Yeah, of course, RD. Uh, Scotland still in the plans? Absolutely. Just not anytime soon. Uh, that is on my um, my list that I have with my dad. So my dad and I are going to be going to Scotland as soon as he's available. Jump in, jumping jacks on a plane and no, I'd scare everyone. Well, if I went with you, Asha, I would do them with you and we, we could look goofy together. Sometimes it helps to just make an arse out of yourself with your friends. Um, let's see. Yeah. So let's move on to the next, let's see, flying standby. That's the other thing is if you have the flexibility and the patience, um, book the cheapest flight based on the times. Um, obviously it's not going to be the most desirable time to, to depart or arrive, but see if you can purchase that flight and then um, just arrive at the airport around the time that you wanted to leave and just ride standby. See if you can get on the standby list. Sometimes that actually works out. Um, another thing that's kind of, I don't know, um, some people might question the integrity of people who do this, but some people, if you're really brave and you're really flexible, you can seek out overbooked flights on purpose. And then what you do is they give you a free flight voucher. So they boot you off. You go, you go and you expect to be booted off the flight and they give you a free flight voucher. Um, and that only works with certain airlines. So I would research that further. Um, but just the, the other stipulation is to make sure that you are using a carry-on. Asha, thank you. Two pounds, two pounds. Thank you, thank you for the super chat. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you are carrying on all your luggage um, because that would really that would suck if your stuff went there and you have to go there. Um, let's see. If you're military, for all of my military um, brothers and sisters, you can take advantage of space A if you have that option. Space A is great, but again, you have to be flexible because the mission takes priority. And sometimes, even though you ride, um, you ride space A, usually in big cargo planes, um, you it, it's not the most. Some people are like it's not the most luxurious or the most comfortable. But actually, I've found that you can like sprawl out and, and lay horizontal and you know, you're around a whole bunch of military stuff. But um, you you can definitely fly for free space A if you're military. And um, if you get stuck somewhere, though, just make sure that you're OK with that and have a backup plan. If the mission has to divert somewhere, um, just have a backup plan. Um, I've been on an airplane. It was fun. They serve drinks and snacks. <laughs> Awesome, Patrick. Uh, sorry, you am on a plane. Yes, for sure. Um, what is space A? Is space avail availability, I think is what it stands for. But yeah, that I mean, that's only going to be available for, for military. Um, but that's something that I never really took advantage of um, when, when I was in. Um, let's see. I'm hearing music playing, it's really bothering me. That's what it was. Okay. Um, so let's see, red eye flights. So the most inconveniencing types of flights are gonna be the cheapest. Um, if you can go red eye, um, let's see. Cheapest days to buy flights in all of the year is Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Boxing Day, which is December 26th, or Small Business Saturday, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So um, keep those days in mind. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, the cheapest airlines. So the cheapest airlines, first I'll talk about the cheapest airlines in the United States, and then I'll talk about worldwide. So the cheapest airlines from um, the United States are typically Southwest, Frontier, Spirit, um, Sun Country, Wow Air, um, and then JetBlue and Porter. Um, then worldwide, you're looking at um, Air Asia. Let's see, they're like the number one ranking cheap in cheap flights. Uh, Norwegian is on there. JetBlue again. Uh, EasyJet. 
Virgin America, uh, Jetstar Airways, Air Asia X, and uh, Azul Brazilian Airlines. Those are the cheapest worldwide airlines. Um, cheapest time of year to travel is early December because it it's sandwiched in between Thanksgiving holiday and Christmas holiday. So cheapest time of year is um, in between those holidays and the month of January. So you still have a little bit of time. You've got six days left of January um, post holiday season. But um, like I said, the bottom line is just flexibility on your dates, your times of travel, um, your itinerary. Um, and, and that's, I think that's all I have. That was a lot of information. Um, oh, airline miles, taking advantage of, um, points are, are great. You can get an entire ticket for free just for signing up. I know Southwest offers, or they were at one point, 60,000 points or miles, which is worth one ticket. Um, or sometimes more, but you can get a free companion ticket. These are things to, to consider. Um, some people will just sign up for the, the credit cards just to get the, the tickets. Um, I personally don't like the idea of having a whole bunch of credit cards, but um, to each their own if it works for you. If, if you want a few free tickets, um, if, you got, if you have a huge event coming up, um, I would hold off until you've got that event and then cash those in. Um, that's it. That's bad. Cover the list. It, do you guys have any tips? Um, if you do share them, um, we can open this up for, for some more discussion. Hi, Carl. Um, easy jet in UK. Do you watch sports? I used to watch Seahawks games, but I'm not so much anymore. Um, but when I was married, we were big into Seahawks games. I've actually been to one football game. Um, whatever you do, don't use Ryan Air. They're ghastly. Oh, no. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Um, but what do you guys do? What have you noticed are some tips and tricks that we haven't uh, covered here? If you're watching this um, replay after the live, please leave a comment. And let us know what works for you. If there's something we did not discuss, um, sharing is caring. Whatever. Oh, thanks for the tips that really useful. Of course, Simon. Simon yeah, definitely. Um, it's. It's interesting because sometimes you just can't get around the cost of travel, of airfare specifically. Sometimes you just have to bite um, the bullet. A lot of people also think that by waiting to the very, very, very last minute, you can find some last minute deals just by showing up at the airport because um, they're just trying to get rid of some seats. I don't like doing that because I like to be OCD with my travel plans and just need to guarantee that I'm going to actually get to a destination. Um, but it works for some people. Um, I'm going to check out Skyscanner. Yes, check out Skyscanner and uh, Mamondo. Those both work great. Family got booted from flight because of body odor. Make sure you have shower before you fly. Booted, wow, interesting. That's interesting, Dave. I mean, that would be a hack, I guess, if booted, but then were they credited? Did they get a, a travel voucher a, or, or a flight voucher? Or it's just, you, I mean, you should have good hygiene if you're going to be in an enclosed space and respect other people. Yes, I agree. Kicked off because, wow, interesting. Interesting. Um, I've, I, I've been, I've sat next to so many unique characters. Um, that's the politically correct way I can say. I've been next to really noisy people. I've, I've been next to people with no personal space, people who intentionally get into your bubble because it's like an alpha thing. Um, and she was a female too. She used her elbows. There were like lethal weapons, this lady. <laughs> unique yes um she man but that's the thing that's a tactic people use right when they sit down um they they stake their claim on their territory and they put their elbows on both the rests and there's people like me where i'm just like hi sorry <laughs> can i have a little bit of space please and um people are so obnoxious sometimes on planes there is an entire it's like pass passenger shaming there's an entire um instagram account uh 
it's it's comical what people think they can get away with on on planes uh, people who kick your chair from behind yes um i one time had to sit back by the um toilets or by the loos by the the latrines the lavatories there we go um and i had like the last row of seats and there would be this line that would um pile up near my seat and everyone would feel the need to use my my seat as a handrest and i get it for elderly individuals that need balance but make sure my hair is not like getting pulled please um but just yeah be considerate of other others when you're when you're around their personal space but i don't know you get used to it after a while i sat next to the the cutest he was probably like almost three years old cutest kid on the way to hawaii he napped the entire time and the first hour he was offering me pretzels um so so cute and i'm super patient so i was letting the mom know don't worry i love kids he's not going to upset me if he cries um but it's it's uncomfortable for everybody and just know that um the people with the loud kids um or the crying kids usually the parents feel terrible usually um so just know that and try to have patience bring earplugs I'm not sure if you talked about this, but what do you think about credit cards that offer travel points that can be used for flights? I did, Pat. Are they any good? Hi, Pat, by the way. They are good. I know Capital One has cards like that. Yeah, there's a couple of different kinds you can get. You can get airline-specific ones, which will offer you perks like priority boarding, um, free check bags, um, status stuff, uh, discounts on in-flight meals, things like that, and then um, companion vouchers. But then there's like Chase Sapphire, I think, where it's not airline specific. So you're not going to get the airline perks for loyalty, but it opens you up. It You still collect travel points and it opens up your options. So you can, um, you, you have more choice. Um, but if you're loyal to one specific airline, it's actually better to go. Um, like for me in the Pacific Northwest, I fly Alaska Air a lot. So I've been waiting for my uh, debt to go down so my credit score goes up um, so that I can be approved for a, a good um, Alaska card so I can start taking advantage of that. But yes, to answer your question, yes, avoid sitting next to the lose. <laughs> the lose, nice. That that was a great joke, Lou. <laughs> Crystal Space, what's that? Hi, Taylor. Oh, Taylor, you can um, travel with me anytime. Again, we were talking about the Bahamas uh, uh, vlog, and I was I brought that up for someone who asked about cruises earlier. Guys, Fem Yoga, um, she went with me, so she's featured all over the place in that video. We had so much fun, so much fun. Um, we need to go back. There's a great episode about flying and fly points. Have you heard of a TV show, show called Adam Ruins Everything? No, I haven't. Carl, I'll have to check that out. Kangaroo, kangaroo. Um, no, no. Lou, that made me laugh. The Lou's. Lou has this thing where it's, I call him one joke a day, Lou, but his jokes of the day pack a punch. Like he doesn't say much, but when he does, it's hysterical. Um, oh my God, I had a dream we were back at that boat cap captain guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He was the happiest individual I've ever met in my life. Loved his job. Um, he ran the snorkel um, group tour and he drove the boat. He was playing, you know, some, I don't know, Jamaican music and he was into it and I was into it. And oh, that was so much fun. Um, and he made it very apparent. He's like, I love people. I love making people happy. Um, I love when individuals love their job so much like that. It just kind of bleeds through onto other people. Um, riding around on some river, having a blast. <laughs> nice. Before 9-11, about half the flights I was on, I would spend in the cockpit for the landing. Really missed that. On the jump seat, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they before they had to lock everything up, that's fun. Um, we called it seat five on AWACS, and I got to do that a few times. That is a lot of fun. There's a lot that happens in the critical like takeoff and landing moments. Um, 
I always felt like I was in a high chair, um, like some kid. And then the five point harness, you've got the straps here, straps here, and one, you know, between your crotch. And it's like super secure. Um, I loved that though. It's fun. It's fun. Um, Taylor on the channel. <laughs> Yes. So thank you so much for the, um, for the super chat and, um, just for the support. Thanks for watching. If you, um, if you're not subscribed, but you want to see some more, I do have some really exciting trips coming up. Just upgraded my camera, um, to a Sony Alpha 7 Mark III. So I'm still kind of practicing that. Um, but as soon as we can get that going, the production level is going to go up a little bit. I have no idea what my lighting looks like right now. It looks like we've um, just got a cloud cover. So I'm probably a little dark. I cannot see myself, um, which has actually been kind of nice this broadcast because usually I'm obsessing over, oh, a hair is out of place or something. But fellow broadcasters, I'm sure you can relate. It's weird to broadcast and not see what don't have a monitor. Um, so now I have to pay to make a comment. No, Drew. Hi, Drew. No, you don't have to. You make a comment. Um, but the benefit of Super Chat is um, it goes to support the channel, but it also bumps your comment to the top and gives it priority. Um, I also had a dream that you and Eunice were kissing. I, I kissed Eunice on the cheek. She's she's my friend. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it'll give your comment priority, which is cool. Let's see. Um... Taylor, thank you. Sneak me to Costa Rica. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll sneak you. I sneak you. I make you. I stuff you in my suitcase. You probably would fit, actually. I'd love you. Um, where are you based out of? Um, John, thank you for asking. I am based in Seattle. Uh, and most of the travel that I that I uh, started doing on this channel was Pacific Northwest. So I would go up to Canada. I would go down to Oregon, um, parts of California, and all over Washington State. I did the San Juan Islands. Um, and then last fall, I opened it up to international travel and did, um, not that Canada wasn't international for me, but for me, it's so close to home that I don't really consider it another country, which is weird. Um, but then I started traveling to um, Hong Kong. I went to Finland in, uh, not this last Christmas, but the Christmas before, um, and several other places. And then the military, lots and lots of travel. but. Um, but yeah, I'm based in Seattle and um, I like calling Seattle home, but I also like the fact that I can escape the rain as often as I do because it is starting to rain a lot here. It always rains in Seattle. You pack so efficiently, I probably would fit. You would. I'll roll you. Um, I would love to own a private island. You can, actually, if you've got the money. There's actually islands for sale. I know there was one in Scotland that was for sale. It was going for... I don't know, a couple million or something, less than that, um, depending on what kind of money you have. Uh, or if you got like a, a group of people together to purchase the island and just make it like a timeshare situation, ouch. Um, that'd be kind of a good idea. I don't know. Do you guys want to do that? Hi, John. Good to see you. I'm thinking about moving to Hawaii. Thoughts, John, what island? Um, I can tell you from experience that I love Oahu. Kauai um, is, is really up there. I've been to the big island, um, but that was a while ago. I think it depends on what your lifestyle is. If you want a little bit of the urban life still, there's obviously going to be much more of that in Oahu, um, but you still get the, like, uh, the, the tropical experience. Um, Kauai, if you love outdoor activities, um, Kauai is gorgeous. It just rains there. Kauai is like the Seattle of, of the Hawaiian islands. Um, so if you, if you don't mind the rain and Kauai, um, a private web server, Scotland is cheap. I think it must be the weather. Yes. Yeah. Don't plan wedding on, on Tahiti. Good to know. Good information. All couples divorce after. What? Is it cursed? It's like the Bermuda marriage triangle. Has anyone been to Bermuda? Just open, opening this up. Um, if anyone has anything to add about um, cheap airfare, please feel free at any time just to, so that we can keep the conversation going. Um, that's interesting. Um, an interesting piece of information, though, John. 
kind of kind of depressing actually i feel like vegas is probably the number one highest divorce rate just because it's so easy to get married there um and elvis can marry you sort of a curse yes um are you speaking from experience i don't know if that's personal information or if someone someone you know um i'm trying to think of other ways that i've saved I think we covered a lot. We covered a lot. So I hope that um, you guys found these tips useful and um, it makes me excited to know that you guys are interested in saving money. I'm a huge money saving nerd. So um, this is right up my alley. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Someone else, XP? Oh, XP. Someone else's experience. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out, you guys. In Vegas, you can get married by Elvis and also with an Elvis. <laughs> nice. Give a thumbs up before you go. Oh, thanks, RD. Yeah, if you guys liked the broadcast, feel free and give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free and give it a dislike. Um, I'm open to constructive criticism. This is a learning process or process for some of you, um, for me. So, um, Always, if you have a question for me, you can either leave it publicly as a comment or you can reach out to me via DM on Twitter. I'm on uh, Periscope. I go live almost daily over on Periscope. Um, what else? Uh, Instagram as well. Uh, do you recommend sneaking into the cargo department on the plane? Only if you're an animal, maybe. I used to actually, side note, I flew with my Pomeranian when I had her. I used to carry her um, in a bag that looked like a purse and they were charging, it was like $75 each way for the pet. And she was so quiet. She was so good the entire time that, and I traveled a lot with her. I just brought her everywhere and I, st I feel kind of bad. I, I got away with actually bringing her on a couple of times. Um, the whole integrity thing though, you guys, um, th there's only a certain number of pets that are allowed per trip. So just make sure you cover all your bases before. I don't want to encourage you guys to try and cheat the system. Um, however, I was able to get away with it a couple of times. What do you think of LA? Callie, I was born um, in Burbank, actually. Uh, what do I think of Los Angeles? It's interesting. I feel like it's a melting pot. I feel like it's getting busy. I think it's overly priced. Um, but it has its perks. Uh, it's it's always on fire these days. Um, it's dry, but it's interesting. There's a lot of um, great landmarks there. That's what I think of LA. Was innovative today. Thank you. Thank you, Asha. Thanks, SCL. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, RD. Steph is is on all the things. Yes, I saw Super Froze. Hi, replay Super Fro. Um, I saw your tweet on the all the things statement. I do say that. Um, and it's interesting, like, I don't know what I say until you guys bring it up and, uh, and mention you say this. I'm like, I guess I do say that a lot. Turf surf. Thank you. Uh, would I travel to Bermuda? Yes, I would actually. I'm actually, yes, I, I would think it'd be fun. Register pet as service animal. That's yeah. That's a good, good kind of way to get around it for sure. Um, all right. Thanks for hanging out. And, um, Stay tuned for more stuff. I will probably be going live for the next few Fridays until the um, mid-February trip to Central America. Um, but uh, I don't know. I might try and come up with a um, an actual studio type video or another tips, but not necessarily a live one. We'll see. We will see. Um, thanks, Steph. Definitely going to review this vid before I book my next travel. Cool, Lou. Good luck. Um, happy travel, everybody, and and happy um, booking. And we'll hopefully see you soon. Hola, Richard. Hi. Take a happy weekend. You too. Yay. Uh, have you been to Santiago, Chile? No, I have not. I have not. Um, thanks for the great tips. And skiing next week. So we'll catch you on the following. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, alrighty then. Well, Wendell, welcome and um, have a good weekend and I'll see you guys the next broadcast. Go follow me on Periscope if you want to see me tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Good to see you too, Drew. Go grab you some in and out Oh, I know. I wish. I wish. I wish we had it in Seattle. 
Okay, bye. How do I close this? Do the things. And and broadcast. This thing is like super zoomed. It's so funny. That huge forehead. All right. If I close this out. <laughs> live chat. Nope, that's not in broadcast. Live chat. I'm a rookie. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Um <laughs> End broadcast. End broadcast. Where are you? There it is. There. I had to like look all over the place. All right. Bye, you guys. <laughs>